question. And it's really, I think, related strongly to my discipline. So mm -hmm. my background and my training is in conservation biology. So how can we manage our natural resources sustainably? Mm -hmm. And when we say sustainably, inherently, there's a really critical component of social justice and equi equ equity that's mm -hmm. included in that to truly be sustainable. And so my discipline has been working really hard to be more transparent and more accessible in what we do in our decision making and in um, the communities that we work with. So my discipline, for example, has created a free conservation textbook. There's actually, so there's one main one about conservation biology and then another one about um, common pool resources that are free, open source, and have resources associated. And so it's something the discipline itself advocates for. And um, I was a first generation student. Um, I had student loans and worked through college. And so I very much experienced the angst of having to right. purchase really expensive textbooks for my classes. And so, you know, both in trying to empathize for students and also in trying to understand the equitability and accessibility issues with high cost materials, um, I, I think OER is, is something I'm very passionate about and something that I, I commit to in all of my classes. That's a good question because there's there's pluses and minuses. You know, a, a textbook that you that I would select for a class has a lot of curated material. So that's very nice. It's work that I don't have to do. And oftentimes, and I think students don't know this, but textbooks come with lecture slides, exams, quizzes, assignments. It's like a whole package. And so that helps in putting together a course. And especially for new professors who are putting together courses for the first time, that can be a really critical support tool. Yeah. You know, so I don't I don't want to blame other professors for making use of those materials. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that because uh, for most of my classes, I'm not using a textbook. There's few completely um, free textbooks that apply to most of my courses. I it, it kind of obligates me to spend t invest time in the literature and make sure that I'm up to date and checking out what's available. Right. Um, I also spend a lot of time networking with other professors in my discipline about what's available and how we can share resources or how we can come up with uh, interesting assignments and assessments um, for students. Uh, well, it definitely takes a lot more time. Mm -hmm. um, so more time because you have to read all those things <laughs> rather than <Right>. just selecting <laughs> a, a textbook. Um, and also sometimes you can't find exactly what you're looking for. And that's, I think, the biggest struggle right there. Mm -hmm. So, so far, the only class that I regularly require a book is scientific writing. Um, luckily, you can find it on Amazon for like $10. So it's not a, yep. it's not a huge expense. Um, but I haven't found an equivalent resource that is so thorough and comprehensive. Um, and, you know, the way I think about it is that's something that a student who takes scientific writing will take through their career because you're going to apply writing in all of your scientific classes in your career. So that's an investment. Right. And so I try to think about it in, in, in that sense. Um, so definitely the time sink and definitely trying to put together the because it is kind of like putting together a textbook. So you're trying to find readings or resources, videos and things like that that can together. <laughs> make up the content of a course. Right. Um, so, so it does take time. And I would say that the OER grants that were funded by um, Colorado State uh, Department of Higher Ed were critical for some faculty to be able to spend that time. So right. to actually pay them for the time to, to do that. And mm -hmm. I hope to see more of that kind of investment, especially for new faculty who are starting to develop courses. If we get them right off the bat, investing in OER, then you've got somebody who for the rest of their career will hopefully continue to do that. So I, I I've, haven't really spent much time using a textbook, so I don't know a paid for textbook. And so mm -hmm. I, I don't, I can't really say how the process is different. You, you know, I, you know, yeah. when you build a course, um, 
I guess I like to use, um, it's called backwards course design. Mm -hmm. So you start with the end product. So what are the things that I want students to get out of this class? And there's yeah. usually a mixture of content, knowledge, and skills. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, you list those out and then you work backwards. So if that's the end, <laughs> how am I going to get there? So right. what are the things? So obviously they need to know those things, but then what's the foundational kind of background stuff that they need to know to get there mm -hmm. and, and then finding materials. So it's, it's not actually that different than putting together a regular course. And I would say often you'll have courses that even if they have a textbook, they supplement it with videos and readings and things like that, because it's, unless you're in a really standard um, course, uh, maybe at the intro level, mm -hmm. frequently a textbook isn't going to work for every single course of that type or every single professor or, you know, what, how, how they teach and, and what they want students to get out of it. So I have the same advice for faculty, regardless of its OER or whatever, mm -hmm. and that's try not to change your entire course every semester. It's going to be too much work. Yeah. So pick a couple of things. So start off with, okay, um, maybe the first week of classes, try to find materials that replace that chapter. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you've changed one thing. And if that goes well, maybe next semester you can do weeks two and three. And so build up to it. Yeah. Um, and once you start doing it, obviously it's it's easier and you become more familiar with it and you can try out new things. Um, but don't feel like you have to convert the entire course right away. Um, I, I've had some comments in teaching evaluations that say that students say they appreciate not having to pay for um, OER. I had one student say she really enjoyed the readings um, every week and especially because they came from different perspectives. You know, if yeah. you use a textbook, then it's the same set of authors. I mean, sometimes they'll have different authors for each chapter, but different editors. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, so for my so for my intro class, you know, we'll read um, a scientific journal article and then one from, a, you know, a poet or I have a reading from um, uh, this guy who's a he's a reverend and he talks about um, the philosophy of, of environmental management from his religious perspective. And so there's a lot more flexibility with OER. And so what I'm hoping for is that um, depending on what the students interests, perspectives or learning styles might be different things will speak to them in different ways. And so yeah. um, that I, I think that's beneficial also. Um, so, so that's a concern, not just with OER, but with open access, anything, mm -hmm. right? And I would just point folks to the really amazing examples of how open access resources that are community managed and community driven are very high quality. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, Linux as an operating system mm -hmm. is great. Um, R, the statistical software, is great. <laughs> um, we even have GIS options, so QGIS. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's not, quality is not an inherent concern. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes what happens is that when it comes to OER, there is a lot of, there's like infinite content almost, right, on the internet. Yeah. And so, um, it's very easy for folks to slap something together and put it up and say that this is an educational whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you do have to put in the time and effort to sort through that and find the good stuff. But that's not any different than selecting a textbook. You know, there's good mm -hmm. textbooks and bad textbooks. Um, it, it doesn't have anything to do with whether or not it's paid for or if it's open resource. So um, I guess one of the difficult things is that there are large textbook manufacturers, right? So um, 
they come to my office all, all the time. <laughs> They're like, I see you don't have a textbook. Let me sell you a textbook. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, and they make textbooks for all the disciplines. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to find a textbook, it would be very easy to say, for me to say, oh, I know three publishers off the top of my head. I'm going to go to their websites and I can find textbooks or I can find textbook um printers, right, companies that print the textbooks and find textbooks. With OER, that's, that doesn't exist. And so that makes it more difficult. And really what we need to be doing is pressuring our disciplines. Mm -hmm. So in um, the Society for Conservation Biology, in the Association for um, Environmental Studies and Sciences, the societies that I belong to, um, folks are say are pushing our societies to say, "Hey, you're the society we belong to. You're the commute. You're our community mm -hmm. of professionals. And so, as the leaders of our communities, you are the one who should be aggregating these things. And so, I would say for any faculty who are interested in OER and having more OER, push your societies to do that. Whatever disciplinary society you belong to." To make make it known that this is a an objective of yours that this is important for our students which are who are the future of your society if you'd right. like your society to continue <laughs> um and and it's important for removing barriers to access you know so if you want your society to be diverse which is good for the society mm -hmm. um then you should make sure that you're working on removing barriers so right. 